Greetings, Dr. Joseph Martin here. Transform evil and transform the evil inside and around you, and this is about technology, and surrender to love. This video really is about the delusive side of technology. It's an introductory uh, video on, of one of many dozens that will be coming on what technology is doing to us as individuals and as humanity. We're going to look at this today in three different ways, three different sciences. First history, then psychology, and then spirituality. History. Well, we know that the long march of four million years of humanity as homo sapiens, uh, we have increasingly used more and more technology that is uh, of our own devising. Some of it is extraterrestrial. Of that, we have no doubt. We know that from all the uh, national governments and the uh, their agencies of the world. This is not science fiction, by the way. This is something that we know as anthropologists and historians. This is this time, this 21st century we live in, of this global humanity with its amazingly uh, brilliant technological base, is the fifth post-Atlantean epic or sub-epic since the fall of Atlantis. And the fall of Atlantis was due to two things. The misuse of technology, deadly technology, by greedy, selfish, power-hungry people. Now, if that's sounding familiar, you'll see that this is exactly what's happening today on the planet at this time. Only now, it's a global hegemony, and this is something we need to deal with. Now, technology in itself is not bad. It can be used for good or for evil. It's the humans with their, either their good intent or their evil intent that use or misuse technology either for benefit of people or against uh, people for killing and murder and many other things as well. So we're going to look at this very clearly. Now that's the historical part which we will do again in further videos. Let's look at the psychological ramifications of technology within the last 150 years on, in our societies. Uh, modern psychology has only been around so for 150 years at the very most. We can go back to Bloiler and Freud and Jung and Adler and many, many others since that time, which is about 100 or 110 and 20 years ago. And we can see that the study of psychology, human psychology, both individual psychology and social psychology, has shown us that in, within the last 100 years, technology has played a, a really significant, important part in the change and the transformation of human personality and human social psychology within a very brief span of only one century, which is nothing in the long march of four million years of human history. What has technology done for humanity in a psychological perspective? Well, I'm not talking about the ease of communication with the internet or we have running uh, showers now, hot and cold water, we have electricity and so on, we can cook our food indoors and all this. No, that is not what I mean here. What I mean is what has technology in an insidious, unconscious way even, or sometimes conscious, done to our humanity? Now, if, like myself, you've gone through the myriad of films and TV shows and, and novels and books, science fiction, and also just true uh, stories of the last 40 years, maybe even 20 years from Hollywood and all the other Sundance Institutes and so on of the world, you will see an increasing amount of robotic technology that is taking over humanity, both individuals, their minds, their making them soulless, making them heartless, turning their hearts to stone, pulling their hearts out, uh, causing great fear, causing great emotional shutdown, psychological shutdown. And increasingly, in all our movies, whether it's like Replicators and Stargate or any of the other great movies, or the people turning to the dark side out of technology, and, you know, like Darth Vader, he's not even human. He's just some kind of a, a technological insect. We can see increasingly the march towards zombieism and human personality and vampirism because you don't know of your true spiritual psychological identity. You are just taken over by the vampire ethos of just stealing and, and taking from everyone else. <clears throat> Robots, you know, and on and on and on. 
to the point, in fact, where uh, you know it's common to have um, psychopaths running corporations and in government and other institutions, and people don't even look sideways at it anymore, even though we have to pay the the, the levy for all the, the damage that they've done financially and to other aspects of the earth walk or re relationships here we have. So what is going on here? Now, you know, in 1922, the great poet and writer T.S. Eliot wrote his poem, the very famous poem, which we all memorized in high school worldwide, called The Wasteland, in which he warned us of the hollow men uh, taking over the world, and also of ourselves becoming hollow men when we're soulless and we're heartless inside. Now, 90 years later, we have a new movie that just came out at the end of 2013 called Her, which is uh, in some ways hilarious, in some ways uh, kind of compelling. But what this story is about is a young man who, uh, through... Um, many failed relationships with uh, the women in his life over and over again trying to create some intimacy but obviously when you live in fear and you're soulless you know what can you do to create any kind of intimacy with any person we've lost our humanity we're in a dark spiritual time we're in a dark social time and technology robotically has taken over our mind our thoughts and our consciousness in this story her he ends up falling in love with uh an operating system in a computer. No body, no soul, no real feminine. And he falls in love with a fragment of technology. Now, if that's not a serious kind of a misalignment about what humans really can be and a sign of where we are going and where we will end up going with all our, our young people tied into iPhones and iPads and walking into to, uh, posts on the street when, when they could be just talking to somebody and face-to-face -face and enjoying them, you know, Facebook and all these other ways of uh, misaligning yourself with people, misinterpreting, you know, what people's intentions are and, and who you are as a person and having absolutely no emotional or psychological or spiritual intimacy with anybody, that's a real a dire call of death for the humanity and the humanness of our species and ourselves as individuals. You know, this is, is quite a, a dire thing that we do need to look at quite sincerely. Our whole society within a hundred years of uh, <clears throat> psychology in the modern era have become bipolar. We used to feel that there was a great amount of hysteria a hundred years ago, and that gave rise to the entire um, certitude that most people and societies, in fact, and ethnic groups are bipolar. The a manic side of the bipolar is a neediness and a, a, a kind of a, a fear of not having any kind of attachment, a human attachment to a connection to a mother, to a father, to a sister or a brother or a lover or a friend. It's that neediness and that fear and that panic uh, to, to have nobody in your life. And we are all so lonely and so depressed and so meaninglessness is the core of our existence. It's this anomie and boredom is, is, is really all we can feel inside in the soulless state that we're in. This manicness is a, a search for one relationship of another uh, after another to look for some love in your life, and it never comes. You get more defeated and more defeated and more defeated, and in the end, all you do or can do is get attached to your iPhone and your video games and your operating system and you know, project the lost feminine in yourself as a man or a woman onto some operating system, which is technology. How sad. The other side of the bipolar is the depression, and most of us are there now increasingly, statistically, both in individuals and societies, with all this global fall of the economy, the politics, and of course we're fearing the truth that there is a dying civilization that we'll have to put an end to and create something much, much better. This depression is out of fear and lovelessness as well. Somewhere beyond and within and all this is the need to find a true humanity, a true love, a true intimacy, a true vulnerability, a true face-to-faceness with other people, to owning up to your feminine side and your vulnerabilities and all your emotions and feelings. This is what will pull us out of the downward spiral and spin into technological morass and human 
eventuality of lostness and perhaps even just it's kind of like human suicide when the dark side of technology takes us over and there's lots of science fiction on you know technology and robots how the computer all the way up from 2001 all the way up uh, to more recent movies just a brief then introduction to the third point the spiritual aspect of the delusive side of technology um, it would be valuable for you to read a lot of anthroposophical literature from Dr. Rudolf Steiner when he suggests that not only are we, as Jung suggests as well, the coming of all evil by giving our life away to technology and becoming inhuman in the way we treat ourselves and other people and the animal and the plants and the earth, witness the destruction of almost everything around us, cutting down and killing of the trees, the people, and so on to the fact that there is some extent spiritual uh, evil in the universe and in and around the earth sphere. In all the religious texts of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, we say that Satan or Lucifer, the one who's fallen from the greatest light and now has his only aim and goal is to destroy humanity, individuals, and the collective. And in Steiner's way of looking at it too, which is seriously, sincerely based on history, anthropology, spiritual reality, spiritual science, and spiritual knowledge and wisdom on Araman, which is yet another figure that we've had for quite a few thousands of years here on the planet. Someone who will use these greater evil forces, which are spiritual beings with a higher consciousness intent on destroying humanity through the misuse of technology. This is not simply the the insane use of nuclear weapons to kill people, thereby destroying ourselves and our environment through cancers and so on, but the insidious, simple day-to-day uh, -day uses of technology against our own humanity, shutting our emotions down, killing our soul, and, and, and really destroying our, our sense of our true identity. This will also happen within, as we already are witnessing, both in reality and in our stories we tell ourselves, all based on movies and, and uh, TV dramas and so on. More of this in the future. I just want you to contemplate and reconnoiter with the fact that there has been and will be continuing uh, necessity to understand the spiritual realms as I've endeavored to do in my entire life and to understand what are the uh, calculations going on what are the issues going on? How does it happen through technology? And what can we do about it to switch it up and change it, which is, of course, what we're intent on doing. All the great Star Wars, Star Trek, and all these other great shows show us how to deal with evil and technology and in, that's in delusively uh, uh, creating suicide to our humanity and to do something positive about it great story that we're involved in. It is the war of all against all, all evil against all good, inside our hearts and in the world as we see it and we know it to be in our realities and perceptions around us every day. Well, that's all for now. I'm sure you would want to stay tuned and there will be further videos on all of these topics trying to explore and expand our consciousness about what's at stake here in our futures and how we can become truly human again Move out, move out of the soullessness and get back in being heartfelt people. In our Mohawk way, we say true-hearted people, unkwehuwe, and follow the unkwehuwe neha, the way of heart, instead of the way of suicide. All love and blessings, goodness, truth, support, and we speak with you again soon. God bless. Enjoy your day.